Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about some tips to to go through uh, go through an interview in a successful manner. So let's get into it. Well, I think that the actual question here: Can you give me a few tips on how to interview successfully? So let's uh, let's try let's try that out. This is probably one of those uh, most well one of the most common ones. Uh, one of those things that people Google for. I know for a fact because I have a few videos about this exact thing and there's a lot of people out there who wants to get some help with their interviewing process. And I can of course sit here and I can tell you that oh you should study algorithms and things of this nature and so forth and so forth uh, but I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to just give you the three concepts that I know of that will make or will make the difference. The things that usually makes the difference for pretty much any higher. So first and foremost, number one, know your stuff. Really know your stuff. I know that uh, might be, it might sound obvious, but you have no idea how many people who think that they know programming and they think that they are prepared and they go into an interview and it turns out that, hey, you just took a boot camp and you know some basic HTML, CSS and jQuery and then they think that they're eligible to work at an IT company. That's not how it works, guys. And this is one of the first and foremost things that you need to get an understanding of. Is your skill level at a professional level or at the, at the very, very least at a junior professional, like a semi-professional level, or is your, like, are your skills basically at a amateur beginner level? And th that's something you need to answer for yourself. It's very easy you need to figure out what tools that you know and the level of application development that happens within the industry. In other words, check out all, like professional websites, check out all of the tools that they ask for on the job market and job postings and things of this nature and make sure that you actually know this stuff. And then of course, having an understanding of just software architecture, software design, object-oriented programming, these sorts of things, some algorithm, uh, algorithms and stuff like that, because you are going to be technically tested every single time for every all, every single job interview you will have, there will be some form of technical test. And if you can't pass that test, nothing else matters. So let's get that obvious thing out of the way first. Second thing that you need to, in order to successfully do a job interview is that you need to be a sociable person. One of the biggest mistakes, and I know this is easy, of course, for somebody who has an easier time, or who, for people who have an easy time talking to other people, this will be very easy and straightforward. For people who are a little bit shy or maybe a little bit on the introvert scale of things, this is going to be really tough, but it is, it, this is usually the way it goes. If a person has a somewhat good code test and you know they feel fairly certain, uh, people feel like, yeah, this person is kind of okay, it's not perfect, but it's kind of okay, this person kind of knows this stuff, right? The thing that will dictate whether or not you get the job usually comes down to how good of a culture fit you are. This is very subjective and it differs from company to company. But it basically, it basically comes down to your personality. And the worst thing for you is in this scenario, if it's hard for people to figure out if you are the sort of person that they would like to work with. If you are extremely shy or if you, like, you behave in an arrogant fashion or somehow you, you create some type of churn between yourself and the people at the company in the interviewing stage, you're out, of the, you're out the door unless you have some amazing code test that just really proves that you are a genius or anything like that. Then they might consider you to be eccentric, but yeah, that's a big risk to take that, uh, to take that path. You see, it's very difficult for an interviewer to figure out if a shy person or a person who doesn't really want to talk or socialize or doesn't have like a fairly un good understanding of social graces, I mean, you know, it's hard to figure out what type of person they're dealing with and that creates, un creates uncertainty and uncertainty is a really bad thing here. So the best thing for you is if you can get to an emotional state where you are comfortable in your own skin, you are able to go into an interview, just have a good, con have a nice conversation. You can, I mean, if it helps, just pretend like, don't pretend that you're not even interested in the job. You're just there to see how things are kind of 
working at this company. You might have you know, other options. You might have tons of different opportunities out there. And this is just one in the mix. You don't tell them that, of course, but you can pretend for yourself that this is, you know, you're just there to see what this is about. It's not, you know, they're not sitting there judging you, you or rather you're judging them equally to what they're judging you. And that kind of relaxes the whole conversation. At least I find, you know, I find that to be true. And if you can do that, <clears throat> be completely transparent about who you are, the sort of person you are, and just try to have, you know, quote unquote, enjoy yourself and be relaxed, that will go a long way because tensing up and being super stressed and so forth, it's usually a, like, it's not a bad thing, it's very natural, but it makes it a lot harder to figure out if you're a good culture fit. So that, that's the second thing. And third and lastly, I will say that you need to have things that are worth mentioning. In, it's, uh, a lot of people ask me about portfolios. They ask me about what projects should they work on and they should, should, they, you know, should they have a portfolio site or should they build things and stuff like that. And the thing that I kind of come back to here, and I've said this a few times, is that it doesn't really matter all. I mean, of course, having some proof that you know how to do a, you know, make a REST API and make a web application or whatever, the basics, that's a good thing. But what's even more important is that you have something conversation worthy to talk about. It's, I made an old video about this where I was talking about backend developers and how they can showcase that they know their stuff. And I said that the thing that you're going for there is to show that you're clever. And this is very true because clever doesn't necessarily mean that you're the smartest person in the room. It's more about you very clearly proving, because you're gonna get the question if you have a, your own projects or like what you do in your spare time, they're going to ask, you know, they're interviewing you as an individual. And if you then can say that, oh yeah, I have some small projects here, I built this little thing here that I thought was kinda of cool, it doesn't have to be a big thing, it just has to be these small nugget, gold nuggets of information that an employer can listen to and hear that, oh, this person, not only are they, you know, they know there's, they pretty, you know, they did pass the code test and they seems to be, they seem to be very nice to talk to, like fairly easygoing. And lastly, they seem to have a genuine interest in what they do. They build their own small little things to help out in their own life or things of this nature. This is, these are signs that you're going in the right direction because the thing that you want to leave an interview with is the sensation for the person on the other side that this person like a good gut feeling and you get a good gut feeling from all these three these three things combined so what i want you to take away from this is that if you only think about the, these three things this should work uh, this should make you pretty legible for any job interview Number one, you need to know your stuff. You really need to um, understand the difference between some basic coding and professional level software development. Without that understanding, you're failing. You're going to fail every single interview. Number two, you need to have the social graces to be able to, and the emotional security to relax enough so that people can get to know you. If you're tensing up and you're super, super scared to even talk to people, that's going to be a very hard, it's going to be hard for the company to tell if they would like you or not. And being judged in that fashion, that's part of every job interview. So try to relax and try to just be transparent about who you are and have a nice conversation with people. Third and lastly, have things that are truly noteworthy to talk about. Do you have any hobbies? Do you like code in your spare time? Do you have some all, your, your own small projects? It doesn't, ha it's something original that you built that you feel is extra kind of, you know, you don't have to impress people. It just has to be something worth mentioning in a discussion. Talking about a toy REST API or a, like a to-do app may not be the coolest thing in the world. And so maybe having a few projects where you actually try to make something innovative, doesn't have to be a big thing, just something that seemed pretty fun, is, you know, that's something that's worth mentioning in, in a dialogue with somebody. So think about these things because I can promise you that they, these things make or break an interview for quite a lot of people. Have a great day.